Okay, welcome back. Now, in this lesson, this is everybody's absolutely worst, hands down, worst nightmare of all time in drawing. Totally right, and that's foreshortening. So, I'm sure foreshortening in the figure, those F words, right, foreshortening in the figure probably want to make you say other F words. Right, like failure and frustration. Okay, not the other F words that you were probably thinking or think I was going to say, but rather failure and frustration. Well, I'm here to help you solve those problems. Now, it can't be done in one day and it can't be done in one sitting, but over time, foreshortening can yield to understanding and ultimately to you conquering. Uh, the figure and foreshortening, okay? So that you don't use inappropriate F words rather than not even worrying about frustration and failure. Now, this, this, this three-part lesson on, on foreshortening, it'll be three poses. Now, they'll correspond to the basic section of foreshortening, which I call Taming the Beast, parts one and two. Now, if you haven't seen those and if you're not necessarily familiar with those, get to re-familiarize yourself with foreshortening, right? So shortening from elongation, okay? From elongation like that to foreshortening coming almost right at you. From overlapping and cropping and um, flattening out a form to a much more flatter shape. Uh, in getting back down to a frontal kind of view of a particular form. Those ideas will help you. Now, new ideas I'm going to help introduce you to is foreshortening and gesture. They don't always work together. They're a little bit like oil and water or oil and vinegar. They don't necessarily mix so well. They like to separate. And so there are other strategies for laying in a figure and foreshortening, and we're going to explore those um, here right soon now. And so I'm going to use for these demos uh, Faber-Castell, the Polychroma set. They're more of a colored pencil type um, material. And I think that um, if you're just starting out, out that will be uh, more friendlier to you than any kind of chalk or charcoal or even graphite. So these are wonderful, these colored pencils. So let's get started. Now, um, when working with gesture in the figure, now we've still got enough uh, elongation through the model that I can start to use that, that um, gestural line, but sometimes you can't. And sometimes you have to rely on bony landmark relationship points. Okay, so the first thing we want to figure out is... <clears throat> Our compositional strategy, I'm just going to turn it sideways to make it easier for me to draw. So that movement, notice I'm making the movement with my arm. I'm feeling it through, but I haven't made a whole lot of marks. I've made a little bit. But the first thing that strikes me, first thing we want to get is from where that shoulder here is, okay, in relationship to the other shoulder, okay, roughly right in through here, okay. So we have that, so we know that that length is going to come through. We also know that the head has completely disappeared on us. We don't have a head in our drawing. And so he's a little headless, even though we know he's not decapitated, right? So we have that. So we know that arm is moving through here. The other arm is going to be moving up and going to be roughly somewhere, right, in through here. Okay, this is a much more careful gesture. Now, the next thing is figuring out a little bit of length. So when I take this length here, and I, I take it and I turn it vertical, okay, it's about right here to here, probably one, okay, two of these, and maybe just a little bit more, will be where, roughly, maybe just a touch more, will be where his, the bottom of, the, the, or the big toe will be in the composition. And that's going to be, if I put a line, this is horizontal and vertical alignment, if I put a line on the big toe and up, probably right here through the chest. So I'm thinking that big toe pointing will be roughly right into here. I could be wrong. That's, that's totally fine. And I could, I could raise it up. Usually we always have to go back and adjust a little bit. And don't be afraid of that. So here's my design line. Okay. 
axis of the shoulders. I'm going to find bony landmarks of the knees. They're not that far apart. You see the shoulder to shoulder. Okay, here's the, the, the knee. And we get exponentially larger somewhat as the figure comes towards us. Not extreme. You've seen that, but this is not that extreme. So we go knee to knee, which is almost but not quite vertical. Okay, sliding into here. So I'm relating this part to this part, okay, to also this part. It's kind of like a shape, isn't it? Almost kind of, kind of like a quadrangle of some sort. Four-sided object or, or figure or shape, actually, right in through uh, here. So that's what I'm seeing, too. So I feel like that knee uh, in alignment, the sitting down knee, is probably about right there laying across and through here. That pushes me up to the buttock. And so the buttock is somewhere right in through here gesturally. Okay, that's a lot going on there. Okay. Now in the Renaissance and then later on the Baroque, um, and probably even before that, they were using camera obscura in the north, in the Netherlands, and Germany, and that got involved in the south to um, distort, to have a light come in the oculus or the image and then be able to project it in the paper and an artist would trace that off, but I think we can do that without a um, camera obscura. So we have that through. Now I'm going to get the gesture now from this knee, okay, following the tibia fibia over to the bottom of this foot over here through here. Now you notice that this foot is the furthest part out in the composition. Great. So we see that. How far is that up from the other foot? The big toe of the foot ends about where the heel will be of the other foot, roughly. So I'm thinking kind of this foot will be roughly into here. Okay, here and the other foot will be roughly in through here. Something like that. And I could be wrong and I can we can always change that. We need to change that as we as we draw. Okay. That's important because this foreshortening is hard, but we can conquer that. Alright, so I've got some landmarks here to here, bony landmarks, knee to knee. Okay. That knee lines up almost. It's a little the angle's a little bit lower to the other knee to ankle right into here. See that? There it is through there. This one's the angle about this way. So we have that. We have that. Boom. Boom. Okay. Have that foot coming across. Okay. Through there. And then we see <clears throat> this ankle here. Right in through. So we have ankle to ankle and then ankle, or excuse me, knee to knee. And now we can start to feel the abdomen here or the lima bean. It has kind of still have a bean forming through here. Okay, around. Then we're going to follow it up to the arm, kind of the shoulder region. Like so, you with me? Okay, keep it light. Keep it loose, kind of barreled over like a cylinder. That's what I'm thinking about here. And over. Okay, look at that hand movement. Then this curvature around where the knee is Okay, kind of follow that along for the buttock, because the buttock is going to be laying down back about right in through here. Okay, we see that right in through here. So all this kind of abdominal pelvic bean shape. Now right in through here, past his arm underneath there and over, coming underneath, this wants to curve in and get over to that buttock. Right, we have to come through that leg and over to that buttock that will be peeking through, right in through there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to get is I think right now the lower body is more important than the upper body. So if I'm going to adjust, I'm going to bring that upper body back in towards us a little, a little bit too. Now, this whole system, the entire figure can be reduced down to this. Watch this. It's kind of like a cylinder slightly coming towards us but also moving downward towards us. So kind of like this, okay, boom. So we have that ellipse and then this, the, uh, pretty much more of a circle. Kind of like this coming down, okay, and over and opening up. 
Okay, do you see that? Do you see how that's working for us? Hopefully. So that's if we take this is this is drawing, basic drawing, the basic section, or the basics of drawing right in through here. Okay, see how that cylinder is slightly coming at us, but it's also we're on top of it, looking down on it. So that's important to know in uh, in drawing. Okay, so that's that's this this pose is this and this is that simplified, much more complex figuratively. All right, so the first thing I'm going to tackle now is I want to tackle the the knee, and already I want to bring it up just a little bit because it's larger. So we're going to reduce this down, get this going in through here. Gesture, more sustained gesture through. There's the feeling of that. So I'll come down this knee, going to come over. So this is really flat. This is like almost a cylinder coming at us, opening up here. So really overlapped, running through here. This is going to be overlapped to that. The thigh will be overlapped. A lot of overlapping of oval type discoveries in our, in our drawing. So now we have the calf here, okay, nice and thick and wide, wider than you think. The axis is here, the widest part is up here. Okay, right through there. So notice that I don't make a heavy hard line, but I really keep this light because I'm going to make a lot of passes, a lot of movements to get there. And all that will be hidden if you put a finishing layer of value on it, which well, we might not do that much to it. So we keep the time frame of these down. So we have this oval coming over and through. We get a little bit of the thigh in the back. I can more emphasize that. Now, to get this thigh in the back, that's later on going to come right about up here, about mid-calf, and come on over. And there's part of that, that thigh in through here, the adductor, adductor region. So just following this form, overlapping behind it. This is in front of. This is behind. Like a tube coming down. Here, let's finish this out. Let's get the tube now of the leg coming through. Really starts to taper. Curves right through here as it's coming through. <clears throat> the uh, inside ankle, the malleolus there, in through here since the, it's so uh, tilted there. We're going to get uh, low on the inside and high on the outside. Generally, it's the opposite but not if it's in perspective at times. Okay, we get that. Coming down the tube, we see that. Capturing out the tube, especially when you're foreshortening. Draw your volumetric ideas when you need them. Anytime you get in trouble, go back to the volumetric figure when you're, any way you need your drawing naturally. So we have that ankle here. Okay, malleolus. Keep it simple, cross those tendons. Okay, to keep the upper upper calf connected to the bones of the foot there. Malleolus here, we'll just sketch that in. Alright, so it's looking pretty good and now we'll get a better feeling for that foot. Okay, and through here. Notice that length is much greater shortened. So it's kind of like a boat triangular boat wedge. That really that toe, the big toe always points up and it rests in the small. The, uh, the, the um, smaller toes clench and point downward, and then they pinch in both the big toe and the small toe will pinch in. That's in foot anatomy. Okay, which was, I did that all that last year, which was pretty much a huge endeavor. You can thank NKU and the School of Arts for, for funding that as well. So the funding from the videos, I don't get paid for them, but I get all the equipment and sometimes I can write a grant to get paid. But it's part of my job and I enjoy doing it. So we're just going to get the foot basics here because nobody wants to hear about that other stuff. Okay, and then coming across like so, right? Coming on down and then later on the tops of the foot, all this will come down. These toes here, they'll come down, come down. Come down and come down. We can get that a little bit later. So now we've got some, some things working. Getting that length is really important. So that tells me now from the bottom of this toe, 
I can figure out my alignment, horizontal line across, figuring out, looking at this negative space here, that we're pretty close, we're pretty close in that, in that idea, wasn't I? So not too bad in through there. Now, now we're going to come along, we feel this, this thigh in through here, moving over, and it actually moves underneath, will be part of the butt, if the butt splits, and through there where the glute splits, okay? See how we're not, we're using the figure and um, foreshortening, and then we're not using our other F words like failure and frustration, okay? This is good. So we're learning how to control uh, foreshortening. So we're coming across now underneath, now where this calf connects, it attaches back, well it actually attaches much lower, but it moves behind the tibia and fibia here, which is a much more bony area. You can feel that shadow a little bit. Okay, we can feel that, that uh, fibularis or tibialis anterior muscle running through where that shadow is. So we can feel that. This will bulge a little bit. Rubens would really bulge that. Maybe over bulge it. But that was his genius. Running through here. Now, the buttock underneath here, what does it bisect this line? So coming through and it's pushing back, right? Well, we'll see it underneath this area where the with the glute, excuse me, the calf comes in. So about right in through here, we feel that arc. Okay, see I'm kind of making the mark back, backwards. That's going to reduce in, in perspective and go back to the butt and through there. But that's where the first part of the butt is, right in through here. But then the leg, the thigh, the semi tendinous and semi membranous muscle, you know, the fat pockets are right in through here. Okay. And so let's feel this oval of those muscle groups, the flexors and the extensors here, right here, of the lateralis grouping, or the quads, up, abductors. It's pretty dark in there. We don't see the genitals are right around. We'll just use an egg shape for now. They're in the dark, which is probably a good thing. Keep this talk about that so much. You can figure out on your own how to draw those parts. Probably not good to make videos. University videos on how to draw the other people's personal areas. So we have that thigh. Now where does the thigh kind of end down and through here? It kind of goes behind the knee where the patella is. So let's look and see if we've got a good range. If you draw a line in your mind or across lightly, it's about where the ankle here is, isn't it? So we're pretty close, right? And we're getting some nice, um, also, negative space. Here's negative space, negative space, negative space. The figure's positive in between there. So we're pretty on a, on a pretty good path so far as things are happening through here. Okay, so we have that coming through. <clears throat> Thigh attaching up to here and then around in the genitals. Definitely want to come make an appearance there. Okay, so we come in through there. Now we've got a the, the next problem is we've got levels of overlapping. Front, middle, okay, middle ground, background, right, far background, because now the, the uh, calf muscle is going to come on top of that. And so now let's see the flow of our gesture. Do you see this? The outside edge tells us that, but also the inner movement. All the energy is getting to us to where? To that big toe, right there. You see it? Boom, right on out. I'll put an arrow there. So it's getting us out to that big toe. Papa, papa toe or mama toe, whichever way you want to go. We'll call it mama toe. Okay, right in through there. <clears throat> and that big toe aligns vertically, okay, with where? About where the abdominal ends and then arm joint pretty much begins. So we're pretty close in through here as it comes in and around. Okay, comes through this, this arm will come over like so. This arm will come under roughly and then come on top and we're going to be 
cooking pretty good here. Space, we're looking for the space between the knee and the finger hand. So that hand is probably here, thus eliminating the head. I could put a little head on later if I wanted to. And I might even do to make it look sometimes better than what the, the photograph is doing uh, a little bit. So I generally don't want to leave the head off the figure unless I really just have to. Okay. So let's get this now um, difficult positioning of the side. It's probably the hardest foreshortening of the grouping. They're all hard. Keep these forms simple and then later on you can go back and make them complex. Here's what everybody misses is that the thigh, the, the knee, this area come on top of all this and overlap around it. Okay. Now there's a tell there. You see that crease of the leg in the back, that skin fold? That's extra flesh so when he flexes and puts his heel up to his buttock as best he can, this is extra flesh for that, that to, to happen. So this curve tells us a lot. Also this shadow tells us a lot about the contouring, doesn't it? Now we got to find where the thigh ends, roughly in through here. Okay, here to here, I'll mark it, a little bit of extra dark, so it's going to get darker there. Okay, where the thigh ends, the lower leg and the calf begins right in through there. So now we can start to take this calf, and it's pretty full. There's a nice big calves in through here and around and over. Okay, this attaches the patellas up here a little bit, so that's attaching there. And it's going to move gradually softly now. You don't want this to be too hard right here, but it's overlap. See how it's an overlap? Just like this is. So this region is to this, right, as this is to that. Very important to see that. Hopefully you can make that connection. Now the, the calf itself is sitting sideways. It's sitting on an angle, okay, like that. So we can start to come down now. Okay, getting this is going to go a little bit wider, actually. That's a nice size thigh, so make our calf right in through there. Nice and full. Now, the end of the calf, believe it or not, ends where almost this big toe is. So right in through here. So we're on a good path. Now watch this. This is an egg form now. Remember back to the volumetric figure. Let's feel that egg form here. Keep it soft and broad. Okay, right through there and over on this side. We've got to feel this egg form because this comes over and around, this comes under. Right in through here, okay. Up and through. Right in through there, look at that. So we got something nice going on. Nice, big, solid cap. The axis, the widest part, is right there. From there to there, just like that. Isn't that funny how that is? They all work together. Okay. All right. So now we get another problem. It's like another series of overlappings, just like we did here, as the calf grouping, the gastrocnemius, the two-headed monster of the gastroc and the soleus, moved down to the ankle, to the Achilles. Okay. It's like a tube in there as well. So here, running through here, is slightly where. The gastroc splits. See that little shadow in there? Don't make too much of an issue of it because it's very soft. But that's kind of like another too. Watch this. Slowly and subtly, we want to be thinking round like this. So this is where it gets that tapered tube. So this is the part we're drawing, but on the back side, right? On the back part of it. So that's where that tapered tube is. Now we can come down and it's going to attach behind that heel on top into that Achilles. So we have to keep this curve coming around, catch up with that, see how it hubs a little bit inside. That's that Achilles tendon about right there. And so it catches up here. It looks like it's all one, but it's really not. Okay, you don't have to know a lot about anatomy. You anatomy there, but you need to see that form. This comes around, tubed over, and then do you see now what it does? It hits and wants to come over and it finds that medial malleolus 
or the ankle on the inside, fancy word for that. So basically this now is here. Do you see that? And down. And so this wants to tuck this cap now underneath, running through here, so this is going to come over, and so we're going to give that a little stronger line there, right in through there. That's tough going. Right in through and around. A little contouring. Okay, we see the shadow there. I'm going to stay off the shadows for a while because we're working more, more on structure. But they can be instructive just for a little help right through there for now. You can see how that's starting to work out for us. Okay. I mean, it's not actually working out like physically in a gym. It's not doing like, you know, bench presses or squats, but it's, it's, uh, it's coming along. How about that? Okay, that was a bad joke. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't get any laughter. Even my, my wife wouldn't laugh at my bad jokes, so I don't expect you guys to. Right in through there. Okay, that here's the th end of the thigh for now. Buttock, right in through that area. That's important to see that overlapping, overlapping, overlapping. Flattening and overlapping, that is the name of the game for, for shortening, okay? That's a strong problem to take on. But you can do it. That's the attachment of condyle area of the the um, tibia tibia area the kneeling point which is roughly right this little triangled area roughly right in through here <laughs> let's finish this thigh up in through here it's a little bit more curvy i see it right in through from here because it's a little flatter sitting more flats it's squeezed okay like so, <clears throat> and it comes up and through to get back to the pubic region, right in through here, more flat, and then it widens out to get to what will be now part of the patella, which will overlap here for now, and then there's a little bit of a muscle overlap, right in through, right in through the tendon muscle. Part of the sartorius connection back up and over vastus medialis or the knee area on the inside so we got the patella region running through there did not do that complex all right so we have that now coming across this area is a little bit more bony so i'm gonna make it a little bit more darker and this little nodule there anatomically this is it. This was important. This curvature coming right now. I'm going to finish this calf off about right here. It's underneath and lower than that little leg, that little crease, that little crease there, right in through here. That's where it really, the gastroc wants to come into and connect up with the femur on either side. So right in through here is important. And as it comes down, that darker area where it really starts to to turn away from us and get bulgy where that shadow is right in through. Right in through there coming across. Give it some contour lines. There we go. It's not easy. It's not easy for me. You just it well it is, it's just you have to concentrate more. Sometimes I dread doing foreshortening demos because I know I'm like, oh, I'm really gonna have to think. You know, and uh, you can thinking is exhausting. And so, you, you know, it, it, uh, it's a lot, but it's worth it, isn't it? You know, it, finding ref, good reference material for foreshortening is hard. We have our model brine. I did a pose. Sorry for the ugliness. You know, I can't help how I look. <laughs> and then I found, uh, I wanted to use an art history pose. I found a canini. Everybody knows Mantegna's Dead Christ. And so I didn't want to use that again. I've already used that in figure and perspective. And foreshortening and perspective go together like um, just something like peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter like a Reese's cup, chocolate and peanut butter or coffee and milk, something that's wonderfully integrated. Um, so 
All right, so we come down here and then we have this tendon. Now see this, we wanna get this in. It's the same kind of overlap, now watch this. It's a little bit of a tube, it's softly emerging here and then it comes out further. Do you see it? See how those little contour lines come over? We gotta get that Achilles tendon because it's starting to emerge on its own and it wants to pull over and it's gonna connect up back here but over here on this heel. So that's, that's important. So it's another kind of soft transition to okay, the, the foot, which is coming up. Now the foot is really not that hard. You're like, well, that's, that looks like a hard foot. Well, we're in luck because that foot is Bigfoot's foot. And it, now I'm teasing. It is um, uh, a flatter version. Okay. Bigfoot doesn't even exist, folks. So happen. It, it's actually a flatter version of the bottom of the foot. Anytime that you have a, a foot bottom. Now we're going to overlap again, aren't we, with that ankle. Okay, watch this heel. This heel, okay, coming over. This is pretty thick now. Pretty big foot compared. Okay, there's the big foot again emerging. So here's the heel parts calcaneus area of our foot. Run into here. We want to get, anytime we see a bottom of the foot, what we really are after is a good footprint type feeling for our foot. That will give us the anatomy that we crave for it. Okay, so what in the world does he mean by that? Well, watch this. So you remember footprints in the sand, right? So it's going to look like this. Now this part of the figure is where the pads are, fat pads. See, it's a little bit darker. See where that light is on the model, okay? Well, that's what the part of the foot that would not touch the ground. And so we want to emphasize that first and overemphasize it. To get see how we get that foot going for us into here. So that toe, and we have that flow. We have that nice flow now coming in through. So this rhythm, this little ankle, we don't want to make this too hard of an edge, especially in here, folks, because that's a soft, gradual transition. Here's the stronger edge on the other side. So be careful there. Take caution. Okay. So coming down through and over. Okay. Right through there. So notice that this foot's it's larger. It's almost as wide as the buttock. Almost. You can make this bigger if you want. You can go big, but you have to connect it up. So just be careful on that. So I'm going to get a little bit of contouring across this. Model contouring is really a lot of fun. It's time consuming. The next image we'll do, if you keep going along, will be Canini, um, Italian Renaissance, uh, early Baroque artist. And um, it's a view of a figure looking from um, a worm's eye view upward. And he's got some beautiful, intense cross uh, hatching that would just con cross contouring that would take forever. It does take forever, and I prefer not to do that on the video. Just so, so I do a little shorthand version, kind of like, kind of like that faster sketchy version. But it had, it's a beautiful kind of um, technique of the time that we still use, but people don't use it quite as intensely that I've seen mostly. Some some people, illustrators can too as well. All right, so we come down, and we're just going to group these toes for now together. And so keep the shape together. Notice how they invert. Toes go, the big toe goes in this way, the, the other toes meet towards it. Think of it as kind of a curved, you know, sock for now. So that's the tip of the big toe. Then this curve of the small toes, like it was socked or a shoe. We'll take that on and later on we'll come back and add these, sketch these in a little bit here. And here we'll hit that shadow which helps us a little bit. And in this whole area, watch this. So running through here is that pad. This splits right in through here. Okay, and then this comes over, see that? See how that begins to give us the bottom of that foot look that we want in this pose. Here, 
here. And then this heel is not flat across. Now here's where an overlapping and foreshortening we get. Here's where the end of it is, where that dark is, right in through there, right? So we're seeing that dark, okay? And I'll make a darker line because it's there. It's cast shadow coming across. And that's where it, it strongly turns and goes back under and through because this flattens out, right? We see that, okay? And then with this, we have <clears throat> in through here a little bit of a stronger notch. And so the, the point of this now is to get that heel kind of a block. It's got a thickness to it. So we'll come around. Now watch this right in through here, okay? It's like a block. So there's a little platform of thickness here. <clears throat> Running through, coming around, and over. And then we'll come through. Now this heel connects over and through here. See that side of a block? It's curvy because it's anatomy. This goes a little darker. Okay, running through here. It curves in. It really wants to cup in through there. Okay, and then subtly, right in through here, see how it comes across? Contour this if you want, or just shade it if you want, or just use line. Okay, and then this flattens where we hit the ground, and then this turns over like so. See that? And so we have that nice bump of the heel right in through here that we want to occur. Now, so we're doing pretty good here. Okay, give yourself a rousing round of applause. Um, hooray, cheers, whatever it takes in your language as well. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to ask questions. I try to get to YouTube land questions. I don't always get there. Um, this past year with the COVID-19 and teaching, we went to online and it was a big transition and I had university governance and so I just couldn't get to emails. They were kind of backed up and I'm just like, well, I just threw my hands up in the air and said, I just can't. I'm going to die if I don't get off that computer and away from it. I think most of us that have that are lucky or fortunate to have that some of us in the world don't and that's sad. And that shouldn't be. Okay, so I'm just going to get the bottom of this foot um, here a little bit further in perspective. The real point of what I just did, okay, just to make it clear, was this overlapping. This leg was a lot of fun to draw. Buttock is the back, far back point, then the thigh, okay, then the knee area, then the calf. Okay, then the lower part of the calf and the soleus, okay, then the Achilles area. I want to just emphasize, right, get this moving because this is back where the soleus is. In through here, okay, the Achilles tendon, not the heel, the heel is the calcaneus back part. Achilles tendon here around, okay, then the heel of the foot, then the actual foot proper, the bottom of the foot, okay, and then we're on our way, Whew, that's a lot, that's a lot of guacamole, okay, that's a whole lot of that, all right, so, now I'm going to, I'm going to slightly thin out this ankle, it was a little bit thick, and through here and up. And I'm going to thin out this leg just a little bit. And I knew I was going to break that. I can, I can feel it coming. Darn it. I hate when I do it. It wouldn't be a video of mine if I didn't break a pencil. Hopefully you guys aren't breaking like I do. But if you are, it's okay. It's okay to break pencils. My professors did that all the time. I thought it was pretty cool. They'd be drawing along, demoing for us, and all of a sudden, wham! And you just, 
and everybody would flinch and ooh and on. It would be kind of a fun laugh. But uh, I don't really like it because it, it like scares you. It's like, whoa, goodness, auto. Uh, all right. So let's tackle. We've got this pretty much well located. There's detail we can get to in, in a moment. Um, and uh, we'll keep on doing that in a moment. I want to get to this knee now. And I, want to, I think I'm going to have, I might have to pull this down. I thought I might. And I think I am. Here's the top of the knee, okay? Here's the crest of that patella coming on down to the rest of that, to the condyle, and then on to the sartorius connection and the inner thigh. Right in through there, a little bit higher. We want to get, keep him angled, so we want to get that patella region right in through those condyles, right in through here, okay, right in through there a little bit. I'm drawing what I see, but also what I know to show it off better than I think what the video is, kind of like a little face, eyes, eyes, and kind of like a little nose in through here to show off that region. This calf split here coming from the back of the soleus and the gastrocnemius and wanting to come over to the around to the uh, uh, tibula. Fibula is on the outside here as well. We'll leave that. Catch this now a little bit wider. The reason why I break pencils is because the camera angle I have to keep the drawing board flat and I have to reach pretty far out and push down it starts to break it a little bit. And these, these um, wax pencils are a little harder than chalk and you have to push down a little bit, but they get pretty, they're pretty fragile. Okay, like we all are I suppose. Alright, so now we have the thigh here coming over, okay, and then we have <clears throat> This moving up a little bit higher. Have a look to that shadow on the image, a little bit dark. And so I'm going to bring this up a little bit, this thigh. Make those changes. That crease very much a, a cylinder now, turning right into here. Okay, nice and dark. And then quickly moving over. See this, this angle, this diagonal, that's strong. We want to keep that. Turning over and through here and around. Okay, back and through. It doesn't disappear, but it moves like this, doesn't it? There we go. Just like so. I'm just going to push this back just a little bit of shadow for now so we can let that sort of fade away in perspective a little bit. <clears throat> so here and through here, we want to keep this, this very strong. Um, line here. We want to keep that because of that crease and cast shadow right in through there. Okay, we have that. Now we want to reconfigure where the genitals are a little bit. Here we've got this crease kind of belly coming down. Then over behind the genitals, right in through here is where the abdominal belly is in through here. Okay, we have that. Okay, have that going, and then the genitals fall softly onto, here this thigh goes a little bit more like that, and then softly creases in through here, and then we have kind of the egg form of the testicles right in through here. Here we go, I'll just leave that as it, as it is, I don't think the penis part I can't really tell. I don't really, don't really care at this point. There we go. So a little bit of that work, work for us. Okay. So we have that now. Let's come over here to the belly. Let's analyze too for, for what we've got now. This crease of the rib cage. And right into here, it's not the end of the rib cage, it's part of the middle over. Here's the center line, okay, with the, the uh, rib cage coming over, right, right in through here. So all this falls downward, cresting in through here. Now, 
this design line of gesture could be pushed. See how we want to keep it moving this way. So I'm going to read gesture here. We're going to push it over. Here's the tip of the shoulder. I'm going to shorten this up a little bit too. See, I thought I would. And I wanted to. That's why I wanted to get this first so that um, this can be adjusted. I think that, that's, that was a smart move. Okay. And I think that helped quite a bit uh, as well. Just going to darken it out just to push that forward for now. Just optically for us right in through there. Foreshortening an atmosphere and value, darker, more contrast, and more detail in the forward objects as things move back back uh, away from us, they'll lose their detail and their contrast and they'll fade to a more um, middle ground muddy quality. We see that in landscapes all the time. Okay, there's the angle from the shoulder now. See, I changed that over and through. Okay, then I'm going to come and get this curve back. So this curve is important and then this curve, this cylinder, basically this now. This is what I'm thinking about. Right in through here, okay? See it here? Right there. So we get all kinds of telltale curves. We get this one, then of course it becomes more organic, comes down, okay? Which feels pretty good in through here. There's one I'm looking at. The other one, another one I'm looking at is inside, right past underneath the arm, okay? The lats, Terry's major, minor, kind of very slightly. Here's another curve coming down into this major curve right in through here, the serratus anterior rib cage coming down and gets darker there on those ribs. That's where we lose, lose the form into the shadow right in through there. Okay, and then right past the knee, there's a little area that looks like it's down to the, goes to the belly button. Right about there, curve. We want to get this curve. So curve at me. Right around here, it looks like. Here's our center line for what will be the uh, belly button region. Right up in through. Right up in through that area. Okay, that's where I see that emerging too. I want to get this overlap nice and firmed. Where your areas of overlap are, that's where you want to emphasize some darker line weight, contour line. We're relying on the contour line, a little bit of tone to help push the drama of the foreshortening, okay? That's what we're utilizing there too as well. For instance, running right through here where this comes across, this will be a little darker. See how I switched my hand from a palm method to a uh, pen holding method as well to bring that into fruition. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so let's get a little bit more accurate here. I think we're doing pretty good in here. There's not a lot left for us. There's some anatomical stuff that we can put on a little bit later Latin through here. And curve around. So what's really going to be important now is to get uh, a hold of the, I'm going to put a little shadow line, uh, get a hold of the arm and hand over there. I'm going to put a little shadow now on this to make this feel. Right, get that shadow shape right in through there. Just taking on, looking at the shadow shape and then we'll just lay that on. All that gets bathed mostly into shadow shape and through there. You could put down a tone first and you can put contour line later on to give it a little bit of a, a more three-dimensional contouring effect if you like that, which I do for my drawings. Just an academic technique, it's nothing, nothing special. Okay. We have that working out for us. And so now let's get the elbow. So let's reconnect here. And so knee right to elbow. That feels pretty good in through here. Let's really strengthen this line. 
it around. Okay, so it comes over. So I'm having to reach pretty high and over. <clears throat> now, so elbow coming out downward and through here. Placing that arm is important. Okay, it comes out here a little bit. Then it wants to tube out. I mean, it's like a, a tube. Okay, around. So this way, and then the forearm, now it's the lower arm, where it connects up over under the arm there, where the pectorals come over, running through here, <clears throat> and get up and through. You see maybe just a touch of the bicep, right in through, in through there. So now the... <clears throat> The lower arm, the elbow, roughly right in through here. Let's take it simply, elbow in through here, condyle, the olecranon area of that. So, now, this is a two, this overlaps. We heard that overlapping. Okay, we get that. We don't always get overlapping just in foreshortening. We can get it in many places. We have this here, a little rounder. So I'm thinking about a two, and I'm thinking about direction. Okay, where does that go up? Okay, a little bit wider, I feel like, through here, and then the muscle. So that's kind of an egg form too, right in through there, and then up, up, through, right? Where does that wrist end? It ends roughly about with the middle to top middle of the knee, over, boom, there we are. Pretty boxy. Right in through there. See that little white, that's, a little, that's the ulnar bean there. That little, you have it on your hand, you can feel that. Very bony, strong little bony landmark there. Okay. <clears throat> right, now we come back over, through. <clears throat> To that wrist. There we go, we get that. And then we're going to get the gesture of the hand. Okay, here, mark the gesture through. There's the form of the hand, right through there, laying on the model. <clears throat> okay, that's going to be a nice divot where the top of the condyle is. Bony landmarks are going to get strong little darks or lights depending upon where they're, where they're located here. <clears throat> All right, so now I can come up. I feel like I can finish this for a moment too. Just double check everything. Soft, gradual transition through this curves. We want to feel this come through. So this hand movement, right through this soft transition, and through here I can put a little brown line just to help that sit down. There we go. <clears throat> We're almost there. So I don't, I don't think I'll go into detail with the toes. I think I'll leave that to you. I'll put a little bit of dark, just extra. I'll keep it very shape oriented for now. Just to make it work. You're probably thinking, go into all that detail. Well, I've got three, two more to do, so. <clears throat> you guys can finish it out. It's not that important. But the bigger thing is getting the structure. All right, back to the hand. Gesture of the fingers here and gesture here of all the grouping of the fingers there and then the gesture of the last finger downward and through here okay. roughly like so you see a little bit of the thumb just a slight gesture that's enough for that let's solidify the structure here there we go that tendon to the olecranon. Back over 
camera so we'll get the other side of this wrist in through here and that solidifies up a little bit. There we go. That creases in through there. So we got this moving now pretty good. So this is important, this twist, to separate that out a nice dark. Right up and through and over and then we get back in through here. This would be around, so I'm going to just make this up because I can't see it through all that dark. And so right in through there, this is important here, okay, to here, where that goes through. <clears throat> and this, this is still pretty long. See that, that long? So I would change that. I would go back, and I knew I was probably going to make it long, even, so even I did it. So from, from here to the need to where that finger is, this feels pretty good in through here where that's lifting up, but I still have, see how I still have the wrist to go right in through there? So this should be the end of it here coming over and down, and the hand should be where I had it before. So let's move that. Let's don't be afraid to move it. That's better than doing all the detail, it's recorrecting it. If you're just drawing it with me, that's okay. You can change it too, or you don't have to. It really probably would have made a difference in the drawing. It's getting good foreshortening, but if we want to get a little bit more, and we can, we can get more accurate with that. Let's do that. So let's watch this. So we have here this back part, the shoulder, uh, high point of the deltoid, right in through here coming down and over. It's on the outside. As a matter of fact, it starts the arm, doesn't it, over, which feels pretty good, in through here, then around, then back, and then the hand is going to be back over there, isn't it? All right, so now what can happen there is, let me get this foot, there we go, is um, we'll take this elbow which feels pretty good in through here, and we're gonna shorten it out just a little bit to make that work. So we can take this off a little bit here at a time. You can take that. Don't worry about making mistakes. You just erase and you move and you work, work with them. Sometimes I just leave them because they're better. Here and here and, o and over. And this really needs to start here. I'm looking at the shadow. This needs to start right here, about here, doesn't it? It needs to come down. That's the, that was part of the problem right in through here. So we got this too long. It happens. So we'll take that. Here's our gesture. Here's our elbow. Okay, right in through here. Coming over. Okay, don't be afraid to change. Hopefully that was good. I like doing these lessons because you get to see where I make mistakes too. And then I just boop, address them and you keep on going. And don't don't worry about don't worry about making mistakes now. You'll be fine. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna get this thigh. So we're gonna see there and up. Okay, and over. Let's find this elbow now. Let's reposition it lower to here. Let's get this right. And that's why the camera skewer was invented, because this is hard. And artists wanted to get it right the first time. But we can do it pretty well without a camera obscure. If you don't know what that is, look that up, Google that, and, uh, and see what that is. Pretty fascinating. Okay, we have that. And over. Okay, we have this egg form now of the forearm. Through here, okay, coming around and through, and up and over, and around to the wrist. <clears throat> so the hand will start to sit in this direction. Okay, right and through, up and over. There's our wrist, right and through there. There's the box, there's the ulnar P area. Okay, we got that hand coming. This is the forearm, or the, the uh, palm, top palm part of the hand, right in through there. And then we're going to get fingers here and then over, and I'll, I'll clear that out in a moment. Looks looking much better than it did before, I think. I'm getting a little extra to go there. <clears throat> so I'll take a little stronger race. 
eraser. There we go. <clears throat> so Elva here. Since coming around. There we go. Wrist. Pull that bicep up into that chest a little bit further. This will shorten out. Gonna make that all work. <clears throat> Here we go. So I'm gonna gently take some of this back so I can see it clearly. There we go. You look at master studies all the time, you see all their corrections. It's wonderful to see that. And their ideas change, or they didn't like a pose, or they didn't like, or they missed the, the um, proportion of some place, or positioning, and they wanted to go back and alter that. It's a good teaching moment for all of us. That even our masters, heroes, make, make mistakes all the time. We all do. It's just part of the speed of drawing. Alright, so that's coming now better. Coming across there. Get to get this pulled around. Okay, get that bulge through here and over. Get that tendon coming across now. Feeling better about it. Good position, I think, there. Better, at least. Alright, then we're going to get that hand pulled across here. Top part of that, that uh, condyle knuckle, if you will, coming over. Okay, right in through there. <clears throat> Had to refresh the image there. Okay, coming through. All right, now we can get the gesture of these fingers a little bit. Because <clears throat> we'll have to move that with the shoulder. Okay. <clears throat> Through here. So we've got this finger that's moving up. Like so. That was a little long. And these two fingers will group together. There's just two gestures here. And then the last one comes over to here. We'll group that gesture there. Okay. <clears throat> now we've got something I think is, is closer, better, workable to that. And now we can take this shoulder up higher, where it goes, goes up to the apex here, here to here. Okay, right in through there, up and around as it disappears. Little thumb emerges gesturally right in through there. Okay, and then we can turn this over. <clears throat> through and apex higher and then over and then we'll just put that in a contour keep that a sketch right into there <clears throat> let that come around So now we have to, we could clean this up if we wanted to. I'm not going to do a ton, ton of that just to get the structure right. Now we can come over 
and get this lean from the deltoid, the shoulder, that arm comes up and through, just barely behind there, we just want the shape of it, just the gesture of it. Here, here's the elbow, right in through there, okay, and then downward, here's the bulge of the forearm, roughly in through here, just to feel it, right in through there, bulk to the wrist, across, then the thumb finger resting, over hidden pinky finger there, right, and then around back over on that table. And we can put all of that in the shadow that it is. Push it back, push it back in the back. I'm going to add a little bit of head. Like I mentioned earlier, you can do that or not do that. <clears throat> it's up to you. But I'm going to put it. Right in through here, just a little bit of a curve. Right here. I'm going to play off this rhythm. And I'm going to bring it right here. And it almost as if it's resting. Let's see what that looks like. And downward. Okay, put that in. Could be a head, it could be a pillow, it could be a form. I don't know. I'm going to see if I like it. I like to include that in there a lot of times. I think it looks just better. You can you can decide to. It's up to you guys. Because <clears throat> this is the arm coming through. Yeah. Down to and around to the elbow. Big forearm bulge. Over to the wrist. Over and through there. And let's see what that head looks like. Not too bad. So I'm okay with that. I feel like the pectoral would want to emerge a little bit, so I'm going to bring that over to here and down through. Look a little bit more of a bulge in through that area. Okay. Okay. We could spend a lot more time working on the, on cleaning it up a little bit, but I'm not going to keep it as a structure. I think it's enough of the and less than that I wanted. There we go. I'll leave it like that. Push that in there. And this wants to come now. This is kind of a barrel, so we want to get this like this line. So here to here. Okay. We'll come down a little bit. And through. <clears throat> and this bicep emerges over here. Okay, it takes up and over. Because we get a little bit of negative space in there, don't we? There we go, and up. Through that. And we get this crease, looks like maybe the arm here. The other side of it, just a little bit of a dark. Just to curve through there. <clears throat> play too much around with that for now, but I do want to come back over here just a little bit. Let's play off around it. I'm going to play off this belly button a little bit further. Okay, so let's go back in this drawing and let's solidify up. Let's bring also this line over where we have it here. Okay. You always want to give that environment, you know, a little feeling. Two as well here. Not too bad where we have that line coming through. We felt that pretty good. We might want to give this just a little atmosphere, bury him back here a little bit. And I sometimes take my <clears throat> ruler on in here and kept a nice little little edge line. There we go. Something like that. <clears throat> to give a 
us a little more indication of what we've got going. in the bottom. That's enough of that. There we go. Alright, let's pull this out a little bit further. Put a little bit of shadow. It's really about the legs and the feet, isn't it? <clears throat> for this, this study, for the time frame that we have. We're just about done. Got to wrap it up and move on to the next one. I think I feel it. So let's get this little shadow in here. So we want to pull this around, find the shadow shape and do here, okay? Find your core shadow. So shadow shape first, curve, look at that, curve around, curve around, yeah. okay? And then over to the ankle, and then we'll fill this in. Get the background too as well, this little cloth, a little, little cast shadow. Just to get that shape, it's fine. So we can fill those in together, softly if you like. See how we can do that. So I want to finish this sketch out. Um, it's a you know, structure sketch. We're about five minutes away from finishing it. And I want to finish it out like I teach my students, you guys in NKU and YouTube land is to you know, have a focal point. So the focal point is going to be here, this last five or so, however long it takes. And so I'm going to put you know, core shadow here, darkest part of that shadow to make this light glow across this. I'm going to contour down, kind of a scissor sawing motion. Okay. Down through here, taking great pains to leave the difference in the shadows. Nice going dark there. <clears throat> Through here, soften it up just a little before I let it turn. Not too dark, but let it turn. It really connects up there. It's hard, it's hard for me to see. <clears throat> Oop, my wife is just texting me that we've got a deer on our property by our office. It's cool, but I can't go see it because i got to finish this out. <clears throat> See there, I think that looks pretty good just to separate. Because I can't tell if the testicles come on top of or behind. So I think I'm going to make it on top of. I think it would look better. Just like so. I have to make a decision there. Foreshortening. That's good enough. Alright, so coming through here. Achilles, a little bit darker into here, the Achilles tendon. Okay, into right 
do that. Now I'm going to take my black pencil and re-emphasize these areas of darkness to bring out, make it a focal point. So now the foot's the focal point and not the, not the, not the head. By lack of detail and finish, more finish and more dark and more uh, detail and more contrast in through there. Even though there's not as much detail on the foot, we could spend another two hours. I don't want to do that. A couple more minutes here. shadow. So I'm using kind of a technique of uh, uh, shorthand hatch hatching and also toning as well. Using value. Coarse shadow. I said dark right behind that ankle. That's where the focal point is, right in through here. The foot and the heel. So coming through. So you see I have this kind of mark here. It's kind of like a little bit of a, just a movement across. <clears throat> I'm going to darken this cast shadow. Take my eraser and just take off a little bit of this dark on this Achilles that I left. It needs to come out just a little bit. Right into there. Okay. <clears throat> this will come over. Just some kind of cross contouring around, just tell us it's moving around. A little bit of shadow tone back here. <clears throat> a little softer on this heel. Sit down a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to take my eraser and take a little bit of highlight here just to pop that through. So, really push this forward. And end up for sure, and really let that come out there, and then kind of tighten it up a little bit into there, and then around. And I think we've got what we need this study for sure. I think that's good. So there you go. It's a pretty strong foreshortening problem. All right, so the next pose we're going to go on to will be a canini pose, and it's going to be a, a standing pose, uh, and from the position of a worm's eye view down below, and it's going to be pretty challenging. We're not going to go for all of the, the detail of the beautiful, beautiful um, 
contour line rendering, but uh, we're going to go for the structure of it and learn from that master and see what he has, what lesson he has to tell us for foreshortening. I think that'll be, that'll be fun. Okay, all right, there we go. I'll catch you on the next one. Let's go to that one. I'll fade, fade this out as we're working.